Someone has stolen my carburetor. Well, luckily, I know who it is, and I actually helped as well. So my friend, uh, John, who's got this Rialto here, he's also got another Alliant, and his carburetor was breaking down. His wife was due to have a baby. His car was broken. It's the only transport he has. So to get his run in, we took a carburetor of this, we popped it in his, and literally halfway through us doing the job, his wife went into labor. We got the carburetor on, car's running, off they went, and a few days later, they've had a lovely baby boy. So now what I'm gonna do is, he's got this new project, which he kind of bought as she was in labor. I'm gonna take the carburetor of this, get this run in, and then we'll find another carburetor of this one later on. And there's our bounty. Right, let's get this off. And now, carburetor is free. I just need to disconnect the water pipes. Fuel pipe also split across there. Oh, he's trying to take this off. So first thing to do on any of these projects you get, water lines, fuel lines. So I'm just going to fit this one straight in. I'm not taking it apart to rebuild it. Uh, we're just going to run it for now. We are going to get a couple of carb kits and fix all these carbs, but for now I just need to get this run in so I can get it up on ramp to change fuel tank. It's all back in. Airbox to go on. So we swapped the carburetor over last night. That took a lot more faffing than I was expecting. So now we've got the car up on axle stands. I'm siphoning out all the fuel that's in there. I've done it with the pump this time rather than putting my lips around it. As we siphon in, see, so you can actually see all the bad, horrible stuff settling on the bottom. So there's more fuel in there than I thought. So I'm into the jerry cans and then I'll just tip it into that big one. That's rainwater, not fuel. Right, fuel is all out. And um, we've got our luxury cardboard down. So if you recall, there's a bolt that side, a bolt that side, one bolt at the top on the chassis, the two pipes coming down, and that should be the tank on the floor. So... Just started the rain, tip girl. Right, the bolts are all off, the top one's off, the screws on the pipes are off, um, these two side ones are off. So I think what I need to do now is just get a pry bar and just pry these uh, hangers back and then this should just drop to the floor. The only thing it's going to be caught on is the fuel line, which goes up and over. So I might just disconnect the fuel line from by here, keep it simple. Uh, and then of course I've got to change that filter there as well. And it's off. So there's the tank on the floor. We'll get a light today and a good look. You can see it looks lovely and shiny. There's still a hell of a lot of fuel in there, so I've got to get that out. Oh, look at the colour of that. So there's our tank. It looks... It doesn't look too bad, is it? I think, to be honest. Let's see if we can get this out. Right, I'll just put you down to try and tap this around and then uh, I'll show you inside. Right, it wouldn't budge so I prized it off. There is our oh, sender. looks pretty good. I might have to get that cleaned up and get the meter on it and see the condition of that. Let's get that seal out of the way. That seal's pretty good as well. Right then, let's have a look at the bottom of that tank. Uh, and there we have it, the bottom of that tank is gone. And that was our problem. Come on, stay focused. 
I don't know whether it's worth saving, but I think uh, where it was sat in the bush, you can see water's got in there, sat under the fuel, and that's kind of rusted the bottom of the tank. So, this tank is shot. Let's prep the next one. So I've taken off the rear hatch panel where you can get the wires and this one here, pulling it up from the bottom. That is my fuel sender wire. So we will clean that up, put a new connector on the end. So let's take a good look under here while there's no tank here. It all looks nice and solid, nothing that needs to be dealt with. But I am wondering while I've got all this access whether I clean this diff, it looks like it's clearly Spraying some diff oil up there. Not sure where that's from. You can see the oil over there as well. So I need to take a look at that. But I also know from up there, let's see if I do need to do that rear seal as well, which I've got. But there's no point in doing that now because I want to get the front end in the air for that. But I don't know, is that worth doing while I'm here? Looks like it's just leaking around there. So we could do with a top up. What's it looking like around there? Yeah. This seal has probably gone here as well. Okay, that's a job for another day. Yes, yeah, We've got a big storm coming in, 100 mile an hour gusts of wind, so I've dropped that back down off the axle stands for the night. Uh, I've got, uh, I've put the bongo parts away so they don't blow away. We've filled this up with spares and about 100 kilo of oil and fuels in the boot, just to weigh the boot down. And uh, over to the ant, a couple of slabs on the seat to hold it down. Fingers crossed, it'll all be not really needed. And we can carry on doing that fuel tank on the weekend. And then the plan is all these old fuels, the petrol I've taken out, and I run that through a 0.5 micron filter, and we'll get it back in there and go for a spin. So this is a replacement tank, and the next job is to de-rust this before putting it on the car. This one looks fairly good inside. There is rust all around the inside, so I'll be looking into what's the best way to do this. And apparently it is citric acid. So this is just citric acid that you'd use for cooking, um, I'm going to pour this all in here. I'm not really sure how much to use, so I'm going to pour the whole bag in. Fill this with water, leave it overnight, then I'll pour the water into a container. I'll keep that for de-rusting other parts, and then hopefully that should take the surface rust out of the tank. Uh, and then we'll just treat the rust that's on the edges here with some Q-Rest, just to tidy it up a little bit, and get this back in the car. can just about see it fizzing. It's the next day. Let's get in here. And let's see. If we have a leaky puddle on the floor. It looks dry. And the light. Okay, that's a good thing. not leaking. Let's see if we can see inside. So I can see lots of debris and rust floating on the surface. And over on the side there, focus camera, I move the water, you can see it's made a clean tide line. So I wonder if it just needs some things chucked in there and a good bit of agitation going on. So we are now 48 hours on and there's very little activity. So I think what I'm going to do is add a lot more. So I've got another two kilos here and we'll chuck that in and give it another 24 hours. We'll give it a good shake as well. Right, there we are. No. It's 
see it scraped a lot of the rest off the surface. So I've drained the tank. It's taken the shine off all of these nice new shiny bolts. So that's the inside of the tank after we put the stronger mix in it. So it's definitely worked. Now it's looking much better. No one needs a rinse. And magically we are now at JRP Resprays. How did that get there? <laughs> So now the tank's clean, we're going to try putting a little bit of this in it and giving it a shake about. And what this should do is uh, form a coating on the inside of the tank and stop it rusting. Well, I thought so. It's Jason's best pants. Oh, my blue pants! It's still warm! <laughs> So I'm just going to shake this around now and get it coked in all on the inside of the tank. So we've had the stuff soaking in the tank, so as you can see. So it's made quite a thick layer on the bottom there. I don't know if I need to rinse that out with a bit of petrol or just leave it to dry a bit longer. So I'm just going to leave it sit out here in the sun for a bit and then we can fit it into the that over there. Ellie, not the truck. So the tank's had a good wipe out now. Um, so I'm gonna give it a quick rinse with petrol and then I'm gonna refit it. You know, with the joyous occasion of putting it back up. So after changing the tank, uh, changing the carburetor, the car's not starting at all. Uh, I've run through a few things, I've even swapped to a different carburetor, we're still getting the same symptoms. So what we get in this car just turning over, not trying to fire at all. So it's the next day, so in case I flooded it, uh, let's see how it goes. Choke is out, no gas. As you can see under the car, definitely getting fuel from the tank. So this is extremely frustrating. So we know we've changed the fuel tank, we know the car was running before we did that, other than the uh, fuel filter getting blocked up. So we've changed the carburetor, because obviously I donated my carburetor to my mate. We've tried two different carburetors on it, it's still not starting. Um, so the only thing I can think of now, we know the timing's not, uh, not a problem because the car was running. We know everything else should be okay. We know we've got good spark. So it's got to be a fueling issue. So I'm wondering if maybe it's sucking air in from around the components on the carburetor. So I got some easy start. I'm gonna spray it around the carburetor while we try to start the car up. And we'll see what happens. So I'm gonna spray around down here first. None of this is hot, so we don't not that concerned. Uh, full choke. We turn it over for a bit first, see if we get anything at all. See, let's try it to start. So let's try again now with some. started to hear this horrible noise of fluid gushing out and I'm like, what on earth is that? Uh, there's all the water in there. It suddenly started pouring out. So that's it guys, I'm going to finish this one on abject failure. We've got the fuel tank changed, we've got fuel coming through, we've got spark, but not even with this stuff is it really, really trying to start. So, uh, yeah, is it a known carburetor? No, not really, but that car was running, so you'd think that uh, the carburetor's okay. Um, 
what could it be guys um other than taking the carburetor back off rebuilding it making sure there's no leaks on there checking that the fuel's coming through uh, have we dislodged something when we've taken the carburetor off there is the pipe dirty maybe but if that was the case you'd expect it to at least fire up on this stuff which it's not doing um i'm at a loss uh i need to sit down and think about this one so um wish me luck for next time so thank you very much guys for following along it doesn't always go to plan um i don't think a lot of myself that ever goes according to plan but uh i generally thought this would be change the fuel tank get it sorted out put the carburetor on fire it up job done let's go for a spin but that's not the case this time so thanks for following along and i shall see you guys soon cheers they just love old cars